And good morning. My name is Dan Sweeney from Melco Technical Support, and I'm here this morning with Scott Stengel. Hello, everybody. Good morning. And what we're going to take a look at today, some of you may be familiar with, but some of you, this might be something new, the Melco Technical Support Knowledge Base. What is the knowledge base? Why do we have it? And how can it benefit what you do? So let's just bring it up on the screen here. So the Melco Tech Support Knowledge Base is a part of the Melco Tech webpage. Melco Tech webpage is designed specifically to help all of our customers with all of the different products. Um, you can see links here for EMT 16 Plus, original EMT 16s, all the way back to XTs, XTSs, Amayas. Underneath these, you'll find product operator manuals, technical manuals, part manuals, uh, really just a, a complete uh, store of information for different machines, even going all the way back to some of the legacy machines, the EMT-10Ts, EMC-6s, uh, way back. So believe it or not, some of those machines are still out there. And those are good resources for anybody that is um, well, trying to you know, keep some of the older machines going, or if you have something brand new and you want to find out um, uh, parts manuals for the EMT-16+, Plus parts manuals going back to the XTSs and XTs, all of that information is available on the Tech Support website. Okay, let's go back. And additionally, before we get too deep into the knowledge base itself, the uh, some accessories for the uh, Amaya style machines for the EMT-16s, for the XTSs, Bravos, uh, wide angle drivers, information on uh, cap embroidery, information on installing the wide angle driver. You'll find that information here. The Melco fast clamp, extremely popular really all of the information that you need to get started, install, use the Melco Fast Clamp, all of that information is contained right here in this page. And I'll show you one more time how to get there. So from Melco Tech, Melco Tech is located at melco-service.com. Just click on Melco Fast Clamp. You'll find installation information, videos, how to set up the clamp itself for width, height, um, assembly, installation, really everything is covered here for the fast clamp. Um, parts, do people need parts for a Melco fast clamp? Every once in a while we've seen uh, if an arm gets moved maybe too far to one side, maybe one of these parts right here might break the very end. Those parts are available and all of that information is right there again on the Melco Tech Support site under Melco Fast Clamps. So let's close a few of these here. And let's see. Go back. That one doesn't want to close. Oh, because of the Snagit editor above it. All right. Uh, That's how we pull down Snagit. Oh, uh, it's <laughs> up here. Yeah. yeah so I'm with we'll you. Let you get to the tab, I guess. There. <clears throat> there. Got it. Look at that. Okay. Um, a few other things on this page. Uh, operating software. So Melco OS right here. Um, showing you generally the different interfaces, the advanced interface and the user interface for the Melco OS software. Bravo OS, same thing. Um, how to basically how to run the Bravo OS software for the Bravo machines. Amaya OS software, and that's generally used, as it says down here, for XTS, XT, and Amaya. Uh, all of that information right here, design shop information, <clears throat> excuse me, on the uh, design shop 10, design shop 9, going way back. Every once in a while, we hear of somebody still running EDS software. It, it's out there. <laughs> it's out there. I, I loved it. You know, we, we see it. We, we know that the people that have been using it for 20 years still love it. Yes. They absolutely do. Um, down at the very bottom, uh, some of the direct-to-garment uh, uh, printer information, uh, Epson information, 
takes you to what we're about to talk about, the MELCO knowledge base. Um, some of the earlier uh, MELCO direct-to-garment printers. <clears throat> also the roll and print cut. Click here. A lot of information, very specific to that Roland machine, how to contact the Roland support, maintenance procedures. Again, all of that information right here at melco-service.com. Uh, you need to find a technician for a specific reason. Uh, maybe you've got a machine that's out of warranty and you'd like to contact a technician directly. Click right on that map. Each one of these dots is a technician with their phone number, their email address, what they're certified on. Uh, so yeah, you'll see technicians, most every state, um, especially in the east, a lot here in the Denver area. Um, and we're adding all the time. So this map will actually have um, more technicians populated in the very near future. Um, two or three more probably in the next two weeks here. So even in Hawaii, Alaska, and Puerto Rico. So you have MoCo technicians really covering a very wide part of the United States. And um, you know, you're always welcome to contact these technicians directly for you know, maybe a regular maintenance. Maybe it's been a year or two since a technician has gone through your machine. You want to get a hold of somebody locally, contract with them, hire them to come out to your site. They'll tell you their schedule and rates and things like that. Uh, what else is popular on this page? System requirements. What do you need in a computer before you hook up your Melco machine and your uh, design shop software? So these are PC requirements. Pretty straightforward. These are minimum requirements. Um, it says 4 gigabytes of RAM. Why not go with 8 or 16 gigabytes of RAM? It'll just give you better performance, both Design Shop and your OS software. Uh, it talks about high definition 4K screens. Try to stay away from those. Stick with a HD screen. Uh, what else? Graphics memory for Design Shop. The more onboard graphics memory, the better. We see that yes. all the time. Oh man. We want your Design Shop to work very well for, for you know, what you need it to do. And the more graphics memory, the better. Um, local administrative rights. That's always, uh, it, it's a requirement for the Melco software. Um, some places have restrictions that keep administrative rights from being available, but um, typically the IT people at, at locations like that are able to find workarounds. So those are system requirements also found on Melco Tech. Uh, education, Melco University, it uh, gives you a list of all of the Melco trainers, it gives you training videos. Uh, you can see here, Melco trainers, let's, there we go. Um, yeah, really across the United States, contact them directly and, uh, you know, again, find out their schedule and their rates. Uh, we can always assist with pointing people in the right direction, but again, this is public information. It's available to everybody, and uh, it's right there on the Melco Tech page. A lot of our uh, technicians are also trainers, and so that very should true. be very nice if you uh, need your machine tuned up and education on it at the same time. Sure, and some of the bigger businesses... Uh, maybe they're running four or eight heads, and you know there's staff turnover. It's part of every business. So with something like that, maybe it's good to bring a trainer in, sit down, you know, spend four hours or eight hours with your staff, watch, you know, how the operators are handling the machine. Uh, let the trainer, who's uh, all of the trainers are very experienced, very well educated, and. Um, most of them run their own businesses to begin with. So uh, they, they really know the Melco machines, the Melco software, and um, they're available to go to your location and um, work directly with your staff, work with your operators to show them how to get the best success um, out of your machines and out of your, out of your business. I know, it's hard to close, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> One final thing, and then we'll dive right into the knowledge base. Uh, a few links at the bottom. Uh, this takes you right to the Melco main uh, corporate uh, website. Another link to the knowledge base, which we're about to talk about. 
Shop Melco if you need accessories, you need to buy some new hoops, you need the Melco Fast Clamp, or you want to learn more about, say, the Roland or uh, the Epson machines. All of that information, we'll change this a little bit here so we can see more of it. Uh, all of that is located on Shop Melco. There's a breakdown of uh, different parts for different machines, hoops for the EMT-16, EMT-16+, Plus some of the cap driver accessories, uh, part numbers. How do you find a part number for something on your EMT-16? That link is right here. We just go over to part numbers, takes you right back to the same uh, EMT-16 plus documentation and the parts manual, just like we were looking at a little bit ago. Oh, uh, maybe somebody broke their control panel. I love so, how that works. That it, is so nice. the, the breakdown is really nice. Uh, so yes, you can see uh, your part number is up at the very top, the name of it. It can be ordered right on Shop Melco. Let's show an example here. Let's do a quick copy. We'll go back to Shop Melco here. I'll just paste that number right in. There's your product price. And usually, if you click right on that part, it lets you add it to your cart, just like any online e-commerce site, which lets you buy what you need right there. So that's a, a quick overview of Shop Melco and what it does. Um, again, that link for shopmelco.com, down at the bottom of our tech support page, Melco University, Melco World, uh, a good blog post site for people to share information, a software activation link, Primarily for virtual licenses, if you don't have internet access on a computer that needs the virtual license to be activated. So you'd click on the software activation from a computer that does have internet access. It takes you to activationmelcoonline.com. You can put in whatever your Melco product serial number is. On the same screen, you'll see a device identification number. Type that in it will produce and activate that software for you. So that's all done right there at the bottom of the Melco Tech page. Uh, Bravo uh, page with a lot of the Bravo machine information. Source 1, uh, good uh, getting started. Designed primarily for XT, XTS users, but still really good information on how to get started, how to Handle thread breaks, just how to thread the machine, how to handle caps, very fundamental information here. Feedback basically takes you right to a uh, email address where feedback that's you know shared with Melco, good or bad or whatever people want to share. Uh, and a join session button at the very bottom. The join session is something that we use in technical support when we remote connect to somebody's computer. And we can take over your screen, we can look at your software settings, help with some design shop issues. Um, but that join session takes you right to a join meeting page. And we would uh, step you through that specifically if you had called into technical support looking for some help. Um, basically, that's, that's what that is for. So, what was the main topic today? The main topic is the knowledge base. Yeah, thank you. And, yes. and we just spent the first, what, 13 minutes talking about all of the other things on the Melco Tech site. There, there is so much information there. We have so many resources available to people. Our, our, goal is, uh, our goal is for you to be successful. We want things to work for you and your Melco machines and your Melco software. A lot of the answers are right here, as we've talked about, and we're about to dig into some more. But... Um, self-service information. I, I've, I've been a fan for decades of providing as much information up front as we possibly can so that you don't necessarily have to call in during tech support hours. Um, if you're calling in during a busy time, you wouldn't have to hold on the phone. Uh, hold times are generally short, but that's not to say that some lunch times can get a little crazy yes, and definitely. everybody calls in at once. So. Um, avoid some of those, you know, uh, challenges and go right to the melco-service.com. A lot of the answers are right here. Let's talk about the frequently asked questions, the micro, the uh, Melco knowledge base. Okay, we'll change this a little bit so we can see some more of the topics. 
it, it's, it's broken down into categories, but as we're going to see, you don't really need to dig into these categories to find your answers. Um, we'll look quickly at the different categories to see what types of, of topics we cover. There are so many video resources now between um, the Facebook Live and the Design Shop Talk and so many other videos that have been put together over the years for different solutions. All of our Facebook and YouTube video presentations, they're all cataloged right here in the knowledge base. Uh, I know that we've shared this link, how to get here. You don't need to know this link, just start with the knowledge base. And all of our uh, Facebook Live presentations, and look at this, it goes all the way back by date <laughs> to April of last year when we started with our first episode of How to Hoop Caps. There's a Facebook link, there's a YouTube link. So we know that not everybody has a Facebook account, but everybody can access YouTube. Um, really, anything you're looking for that we've had a topic or uh, that we've covered, maintenance. 3D puff, such uh, very important topics. Uh, 3D embroidery, puff embroidery on caps, blending colors, and that's just the first two months of Design Shop, or I'm sorry, of Facebook Live. So you can see all of this information. How do you search that? It's pretty easy. Right here, we just give you a quick, how do you search within a browser? You can use F3, it brings up a little search. Give me a search topic. Scott, what would you like to search for? Small letters. Small letters. Great. That's, that's <laughs> a, a, always it's a high always topic. a big one. <clears throat> Again, it takes you right back to uh, May of last year when we did a small lettering. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I did that. Small lettering. And Facebook and YouTube. So we could take a look right here. But uh, the usually a half an hour, 45 minute long tutorial video uh, showing best practices, how to get the best results, and that's just within this page. Now, let's go back one step. Actually, let's go back two steps here. Now, let's say I want to search for small lettering. Not only might we get the videos like the Facebook Live video, hit enter. We have our own specific documents on small lettering. Now, we also include what we were just looking at, Facebook and YouTube videos. But here's some good documentation. Let's say you want to print this out. You want to look at some of the other resources. Um, boy, there's, there's just so much here, a small lettering guide. So we were providing this to people for quite some time and thought that it would be a good addition to the knowledge base to get all the information in one place, all the information searchable. Um, Boy, we talk about small lettering, talking about uh, the Melco fonts package that we came out with earlier this year. You can click right on that to learn more. Performance wear. How do you handle um, you know, the challenges of stretchy fabric? Uh, here's our video presentations we just talked about. Some tie-in stitch information, shading fills, just really a, a ton of resources. And that just came up by typing in small lettering. Yeah, that's great because, yeah. you know, lock stitches are a big part of small lettering success, and so that takes you to both. I, sure. I love how that works. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. When we go back and look to see what people have searched for, we can also see what people have clicked on. So maybe they did start with the small lettering guide, and then they started to look at some of the other related topics, uh, and that's, that's really the, the great part of the the search capabilities here so we looked at the videos the os information uh, basically on melco os bravo os and maya os you don't have to go through all of these articles to find what you're looking for just use the search maybe you're having some sort of a uh, machine detection issue and you don't have to know exactly what to search for you don't have to say machine detection issue you can just say something simple. We, we try to put all the keywords into this knowledge base. Say something like, not found. My machine was not found. So maybe you're using a Maya OS with an XTS or an XT machine. There's your information. Click right on it. Here are step-by-step step what to watch for if your machine is not being found. 
check your emergency stop, make sure that your Ethernet adapter is listed. It gives you step by step. Go to Tools, Options, Ethernet. Make sure your Ethernet adapter is in the list. Um, make sure you're using the right cables. We talk about straight through versus crossover cables. Those are Ethernet data cables and a lot of really good uh, description of what's the difference. What are they used for? When to use them? You can read through it. We try to keep it short, as concise as possible. Uh, but yeah, you'll find links like that throughout the documents. Again, straight through Ethernet cables versus crossover cables. Uh, how to use a, an older support feature called compatibility mode. It's a PDF file. Click right on it. Takes you, oh, maybe not in Scott's case. <laughs> Sorry. But, but it is a, a PDF that'll open up and just give you step by step on how to enable that mode for some older software and some older machines. Uh, I like the list sometimes because sometimes you don't really, you're not trying to go for learning something specific. It's just great to read the resources and wow, you don't know what you didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Always true. Uh, and, and again, we try to be very concise about the information. We don't want to be too wordy. Really want to keep it step by step. Um, and you can just see, uh, just typing in not found, okay, that's a pretty generic term. It shows 103 different documents within the knowledge base that have something to do with something not being found, such as what if you have, uh, even though we've moved away from USB security dongles for software licensing, uh, there are a lot of security dongles still out there in operation for earlier versions of Melco software. And if you move to a new computer, that USB dongle for some reason is not being found by Windows. Here you go. USB security dongle troubleshooting tips. We go in order. Start with number one. It might be the easiest, quickest solution. Maybe you just need to remove it and reinsert it. And maybe put it into a different port. See if Windows can find it. If not, go to the next step, next step, next step. Uh, so we try to be uh, moving people through things in the most logical fashion. Um, what if your EMT-16, EMT-16 Plus, or Bravo machine is not being detected? We start with some similar things. Make sure that you don't have the emergency stop engaged. That, believe it or not, is uh, a common call. Somebody would call in, and we love the calls because it takes us you know, one minute to get somebody back up and running again. But it's something pretty common that, uh, that can happen. Make sure the Ethernet adapter is listed, just like with the... Uh, previous machines and previous software. Watch for your antivirus network firewalls. And here's something that's more specific to newer machines. Something that most people don't need to worry about, but every once in a while we'll find uh, certain government institutions, certain locations don't have a specific network protocol in Windows. So what do we do? We give you step by step how to get through all of that information, what to click on, how to determine if that is your problem. If it's blank, it's disabled, here's, you know, here's what you do. So uh, we try to lay all of this information out as, um, you know, in, in the easiest way for people to use it from start to finish. Um, antivirus, anti-malware programs, what to watch for in general. If your machine is not detected, here's a few that we had some experience with over time, WebRoot, uh, Kaspersky, doesn't mean that we don't work with them, but we have had cases where uh, somebody might have something installed that needed to be disabled just to get the machine recognized. So really just a, a ton of information here. And that's just under Melco OS, Amaya OS. Here's machine information, basic troubleshooting steps. A little star next to it. Those are promoted articles. These are so comprehensive, all uh, encompassing on what to do if you're getting a lot of thread breaks. What if your machine is making some strange noise all of a sudden? Here's some basic troubleshooting steps, things to watch for. Start with the thread path, bobbin threads. Uh, we have so much information here. Rotary hook support adjustments, videos that we've done on, on Facebook in the past, uh, 
checking your cutter blade and a video that allows you to step by step through that needle depths videos on how to do that clean below the needle plate video check the needle case calibration video so there are so many resources now that are more than just documentation their video instructions the the great thing about being able to post on uh, both Facebook and YouTube videos is uh, you, you don't need to uh, necessarily call up and, and talk to technical support the information is right here waiting for you already not to say that we're not more than happy to help people give us a call you know we we don't mind stepping people through things and providing these resources for the future as well um, Oh, here's a new one. How to determine what main board you have in different revisions of machines. So over time, people might need to upgrade a main board. Uh, they might need to determine compatibil compatibility with a certain version of software. And here's step by step how to do that. Start with your operating software, Melco OS, Amaya OS, Bravo OS. Click on tools, maintenance. Follow these steps. And it takes you through, it shows you different styles of the main boards that are used inside of the machines, how to find certain revision assembly numbers. Uh, if, if you don't need the information, it's, it's not a big deal. But when you do need the information, these are so helpful. Definitely. In figuring out what do I really have inside of my machine. Um, Some of the design yeah. shop... Um, Posts, they also contain files, okay. right? Like if you search uh, Puff or Micro Chenille, it will tell you how to do it, how to set your machine up for it. But also, here's a sample file or two, um, so you can see done properly how it's supposed to to be and uh, how the file's supposed to act and all that. That is invaluable, I think. Let's see if we got any questions. So let's look at some other uh, design shop topics. How to reach technicians, trainers, and technical support. Um, popular topics. We already looked at how to reach technicians and trainers. How do you contact technical support? We have a lot of technical support resources. Some of it is right here in this knowledge base. A lot of the information is right there in the operator's manuals. You. Uh, Anyone with a machine with warranty can call us. Here's our phone number. We're Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30 Mountain Time, Denver Time. Have your serial number ready. And that's what this link helps you do. How do I find the serial number on my machine? Click right here. Side of the machine um, for an EMT-16 or EMT-16+. Plus. It's up above the power button on the right-hand side. That's what the sticker looks like. This is what the numbers mean. There's a part number. There's a serial number. There is a manufacturing code. Maybe there's more information that people want, not just the serial number. They want to know about the stitch count on a machine, the runtime, the total hours of operation of the machine, step-by-step -step instructions on how to figure that out. And so serial number, manufacturing date, stitch time, hours, and stitch count. Real easy to search for if we go back and... Close this guy, go back, and let's just say I want to find out how many stitches on my machine. There it is. There's your document. That's where we were just looking at, and there's your instructions. Okay, let's go back to technical support. Okay, Monday through Friday, 7.30 to 4.30, have your serial number ready. Also, technical support is available if you have a extended warranty. If you want to learn more about extended warranties, click right on that link. Self-explanatory. Two different plans, a one-year, a three-year. Here's who you call. Here's how you get a hold of him. He's the expert on extended warranties. Again, all you need to do is search for something as simple as that. And it brings up all of that information right here in the knowledge base. Here's other things that we have. That link to field service technicians that we looked at earlier, the operator's manuals, the technical support knowledge base. We're right here in the middle of it right now. Online user-based communities. Okay, so these are some things that other uh, Melco enthusiasts have started on their own. 
Look at this Facebook page for the love of Melco. Facebook page Melco Amaya XTXTS ENT16 and plus another Facebook page Melco Embroidery Machines for Business. Our own Melco World uh, blog posting and some older things as well as our Facebook Live just like today and available on YouTube as well. All of these are links. Click right on them. It takes you right where it says it's going to go. Um, video playlists on YouTube. That's really everything that we have been covering. Maintenance, common embroidery techniques, um, complete design shop instructions. Let's go back to the... Oh, let's cover the rest of this. Um, legacy machines. So machines really prior to the Amaya machines. Although we don't provide technical support directly for those machines, we do have a lot of resources available for those people. We have online manuals for all of the older machines. There are some field technicians that are experienced with those machines. You can contact them directly. Um, most replacement parts are gone. You can look on Shop Melco to see if it might be available still for a legacy machine. Most things are not. Um, here are some people and some third parties that may have parts available. Start at the top, work your way down, and uh, in many cases these, these are uh, either technicians or dealers that have a lot of experience with older machines. Another option, let's say you have a machine that's been out of warranty for a couple of years. Uh, you don't have an extended warranty on it, but you need some technical support assistance. Give us a call. We do offer for $50 one month of technical support. You're given a special access code so that when you call into our tech support phone system, you put in that code, it's good for 30 days. And basically it's unlimited technical assistance for non-warranty people, uh, non-warranty machines. Um, click right on that link. Here's how you get that package if you're really interested in getting some technical support help. Our support technicians are trained on all of the Amaya machines, XT, XTS, EMT16, Bravo, all of the software that goes with it, Design Shop 9 and 10. When you start getting into the older, older machines and software, uh, it's a little hit and miss. It, it's really hard to stay on top of you know, some of the software and, and hardware that's 20 plus years old. Um, but having the manuals makes a big difference. Sure. Because chances are you didn't get it when you bought or were given the piece of equipment. Lots, lots of different, uh, yeah, lots of different options for people uh, getting their hands on some of the older machines. So let's see, we've looked at, oh, here's something simple. Let's say you're just at moco.com the regular page, you want to get over to the Melco support page and the Melco knowledge base. So click right up here on top on customer service, click on online support under technical support, click on online support, there we are. So now we're right back into the knowledge base, same link is right here, it takes you to the same place. Okay, so we're back. And we just talked about how to contact technicians and tech support, how to get there from Melco. All right. Um, different DTG printers. The Epson F2100, very popular. We're, we're selling a ton of them. Uh, its predecessor, the F2000, and some of the older machines, Melco Jet, and uh, the current Roland machines, the printer cutters. All you'd have to do is click right on this box, and you can see all of our resources that are available for all of those different uh, decoration machines. So how to get a hold of Epson technical support, the setup guide, training, uh, boy, mixed media. We put together a lot of information on how to combine embroidery and direct to garment, and print cut. There's, uh, you know, go back and just search for some of those multimedia mixed media videos and you'll uh, we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, Mike and you and Nate and the rest of the team really enjoy enjoy uh, getting creative with those things. Um, let's talk about just quickly breeze through the Roland. Um, 
uh, things to watch for, maybe with power, maybe with network setup, maintenance on some of those machines. All of that in the knowledge base. We talked briefly about the discontinued legacy products and a lot of articles specific to some of the older uh, discontinued uh, legacy machines. Parts and supplies, pretty straightforward. Most of the parts and supplies are on Shop Melco. Information on Mighty Hoops. Some a uh, couple of years ago, some spacers that were necessary. Uh, how to use uh, some specialty hoops. Parts manuals, how to look up parts. We have so many different things that people can take advantage of. Supplies for an embroidery shop. Back to discontinued supplies. Uh, Fast Clamp Pro, it's that page that we looked at a little bit ago, um, really detailing out a lot of different video productions that we've uh, put together for the Fast Clamp. Here's that page that we looked at a little bit ago, support page, I already viewed all of this. Um, no special logins are needed for any of this. This is public information, anybody whether you're a, a Melco product owner, or you're considering a Melco product, or you're considering a fast clamp, or considering mighty hoops, it, really you can do all of your research right here, anytime, 24-7. Uh, let's see, fast clamp pro, security dongles we looked at, Melco world we looked at, uh, let's see. Okay, we talked about tech support, basic troubleshooting, what to do if your machine's not found, We're covering a lot of it. Specialty help. What to do if you are breaking needles? Specifically, we see that people sewing caps have uh, a challenge with needles breaking. And there's a number of different reasons that could happen. Here is a great document. If it's only happening with Puff, guess what? We have information on 3D Puff right here. Click this link. But here's some other things to watch. Uh, make sure you have the latest software. That's always important with your your Melco products. Make sure that the design is specific to caps. Make sure that the cap driver is adjusted properly. Here's videos on exactly how to do that. Uh, review your uh, cap hooping techniques. And I see articles all the time, Scott, on uh, the success that people have with caps and how hooping is so <coughs> critical it's to so that success. So important, definitely. Yeah, absolutely. <clears throat> presser foot. Make sure your presser foot's adjusted correctly. It's so hard to explain <clears throat> over the phone to somebody how to hoop a hat. <laughs> you just, you got to show them a video and then, ah, I get it. It's it's that picture's worth a thousand words and the video, uh, it just tells the whole story. You know, everything's right here. Um, so breaking needles, maybe hook timing. You know, maybe we've gotten this far into it and they're experts on cap hooping and, and digitizing for caps. So let's get a little more technical and even more technical. Maybe something is just in the way. So we've got pictures, step by step, what to do. Maybe that presser foot is deflecting or the needles deflecting into the presser foot. What do we do? All of that information is right here. Especially when it's <clears throat> Sunday afternoon. Uh, anytime, <laughs> yeah. Uh, late Thursday evening, early Saturday morning, uh, anytime. Very popular topic, very easy to search for is maintenance. A couple of videos that our service manager, Chris Fenton, put together in uh, multiple uh, Facebook Live presentations. Uh, both of them last year, one in August, one in October. Uh, you can click on either of these, open up the videos. They really cover basically the same thing. The, the later one from October was a little more uh, in-depth, maybe a few more specifics. Uh, people ask about what do I use for uh, certain maintenance lubrication. Hey, we put a document together specifically for that. So always oil your hook, very important. When do I use the red grease? When do I use the beige or white grease? Um, every once in a while, somebody needs the uh, safety information. So MSDS information is, is even included. <clears throat> and you can search for that anywhere. Let's just say you're right up here and I need MSDS sheets. Oops, misspelled. But guess what? Found it anyway. 
So all of that information wow. right there. Right. What, what we've tried to do over the years is determine what uh, common questions were being asked, what type of request. Let's not reinvent the wheel every time a request comes in. Let's put that information together, have it ready so that you know, once every three months when somebody needs an MSDS sheet, a, a, you know, safety sheet, we have it ready for them. We don't have to uh, ask Scott and Mike and engineering and uh, yeah. 20 other people if they have access to certain, certain information. We already have it all in one place. Uh, how many times I sent the puff, how to do puff, how to oh, sure. everything, and, you know, steps and steps to people. It's sure. so nice to have this. It's fantastic. How about a uh, somewhat common question with virtual licenses? That's one of the things you could search for. It tells you how to activate and deactivate Design Shop, but really it, it covers Melco OS and Bravo OS as well. Uh, click right on it, and it gives you just good um, knowledge points on how does virtual licensing work instead of using a dongle. What do I do if I don't have internet access? There's that website that we went to earlier to manually activate if you don't have internet access. Uh, how to upgrade. Let's say you start with Design Shop, uh, standard Design Shop level, and you really want Design Shop Pro Plus. And with all of these uh, Design Shop Talk presentations, I think people are starting to realize some of the things that they can do with Design Shop that uh, they weren't aware of before and maybe they didn't have the software level to do it. Here's how you upgrade. You'd upgrade with your Melco sales representative. They would assist you through the process. But here's three simple steps. That's how you get your software from light or standard with vector or pro pro plus once you've uh, once you've purchased an upgrade to your to your software level. Um, getting back to tech support, email a support request to us. Uh, really that is set up specifically for people that have a, um, a difficulty with their virtual license. And you can see down in the lower left corner down there, it's going to disappear, but activation at melco.com. We set that up specifically if somebody has a problem with a virtual license. Oh, Just email us directly. Yeah. Okay, let's go back. Uh, we were talking about maintenance. Uh, you can't stress the importance of maintenance, so take advantage of this. Even if you do your maintenance on a regular basis and you're well versed in it, uh, take 30 or 45 minutes and go through the videos. Take a look at you know, maybe some things that will save you some time maybe some things that weren't being um, that weren't being covered in the past so very helpful information uh, how about software versions do I have the latest software all right so we talk about Windows 10 compatibility we talk about what our versions currently are click right on it what is our current Melco OS, and why is the Melco OS update um, helpful? What's the latest Bravo OS? Going back, Amaya OS software, 10, 9, 8. Compatibility with different um, Windows operating systems. Windows XP, uh, back in the day, we had software that was written specifically for Windows XP. Nowadays, Windows 7, 8, or 10 is necessary for current software, but all of that information is right here. Same thing with older versions of Design Shop. Current Design Shop, Windows 7, 8, or 10. Uh, earlier versions, really Design Shop 9 was um, pretty widespread in, in what operating systems you could use it on. Windows XP, Vista, 7, 8, and 10. And then going all the way back, if somebody... and People still run Design Shop 7. Seven yeah. They run Design Shop 6. Um, we want people to upgrade. Go to 9, go to 10, get all the fonts, all the features. Um, and, and most everybody these days is 7, 8, and 10 Windows anyway. But uh, yeah, all this information is right here in the knowledge base. You can find out about a really popular topic adding, oops, 
Oop, I misspelled it. But look, it still worked. <laughs> so updating the Hoops database. Uh, yeah, that's this, a common one. It's, it's a real common one. And what, what we try to do at the very top is we tell them what's new. Oh, there's some brand new Hoop Tech information, a uh, left and right side um, windows for the slimline uh, cap, cap clamp. And uh, also Gen 2 cap frame, back of cap clamps. These are all things that have been recently added to our Hoop database. So now the Melco software, whether it's Design Shop, Melco OS, Bravo OS, Amaya OS, they can all be compatible with the latest hoops. Um, we added some premium allied gridlock hoops recently. And all of that information is right here in this document. We tell you step by step, here's what we're going to be doing. We're going to be replacing a file. Uh, maybe it's a little more on the techie side. Uh, get your techie nephew or the IT guy right. down the street to, to help you with it. Uh, but, but normally this isn't even necessary. The database is right here at the bottom of the page. But let's go back to the top. If you make sure you have all of the most recent Melco software, you probably don't need any of this. The latest software already keeps the latest Hoop database files. Yeah, <clears throat> sometimes somebody might have an eight-year-old machine or something, mm -hmm. and then they want a brand new Mighty Hoop, and they can't find it in their right. list because it didn't exist when they bought their machines. So right. this is terrific. Yep, step by step, how do I update my list of hoops? Um, I want to manually add a hoop. This is a little more tricky. This is for somebody that's you know, really into customizing their, their Melco software uh, to add specific hoops. Uh, we've seen people make their own hoops. Yeah, I've seen a lot, of, a lot of creativity out there. And how do you add something like that to your Melco software? Click right on this. Um, so here's a document providing the steps. Okay, look at that. It actually takes you, these steps are from one of the online manuals, online user's guides. It's all step by step right here. Close. How to create a custom hoop definition. Oh, I gotta fix that. Uh -oh. <laughs> just like just like Bill Gates, I'm bound to have one one crash or one thing <laughs> not not work the way it was supposed to. Uh, if you don't want to manually add your hoops, but you just want all of the latest hoops, it takes you right back to where we just were. It takes you back to this document. Um, so hoops is a, a really big topic. Uh, let's just click back. There's a hoop installation program for Maya OS. Um, a lot of people find that pretty oh, helpful. Yeah. When they were stored in a different place, right? Uh, stored in a different place and uh, we put this together specifically when the Melco Fast Clamp was first released, and I was just looking at it and realizing that it's been two years since we released the Melco wow, Fast Clamp. No two years, huh? yeah. And there's still and, a lot in stock. No, they are. <laughs> they are. <laughs> there's, there's more. Why did we go through a lot of those though? Oh, that was a amazing. lot, yeah, and it's it's still. I, I look at it on a regular basis. Where they're still as popular today as they were a year or two ago. Or we go through a lot of those. Um, all your episodes of Design Shop Talk. Here's a complete index by date, different topics, September, September. This goes back to June when we started <clears throat> our Design Shop Talk. What June questions 28. were answered for each session? Sure. Each, each session has, oh, maybe five minutes or ten minute short segments on different topics. Poll compensation, good topic. Uh, digitizing your own fonts. We get that question on a regular basis. Chain stitch. Um, default fonts. A lot of really um, helpful things. Uh, what, what I find in uh, the tech support department when we watch these, every once in a while we'll, we'll find a, a technique or a trick that we didn't, didn't really know, but, but between <clears throat> you and Nate and Mike and Samantha Really, everybody contributing to the uh, design shop talk uh, is really opening a lot of uh, new arenas for people. Oh, people have questions on personalization, rotating designs, just oh, every every topic you could you could come up with. And there's so many more in the future. Uh, 
Well, fill stitches for lines greater than. Right. So <clears throat> maybe more obscure options within Design Shop. Applique stops, that's pretty common. Um, how to eliminate pucker on performance polos. It's hard to say, and we have oh, steps on how to do it. Yeah, and show you the properties for the design and everything. Mm -hmm. Very important on that. So, yeah, really, everything's right here. It's all searchable. So let's just say, man, I want all the resources I can find on things like this. Okay, great. We've got a document on performance wear, and all we did was search for I'm getting pucker and garments, so help me out. <laughs> Just now, why this came up, I'm not sure, but that's that's okay. It got us the information that we're looking for. Performance wear and eliminating pucker is one of the topics within Design Shop Talk. So search from the very top. Yeah, you know, one would be on how to sew them, and one would be on how to create the design so sure. that you don't get puckering. Yeah. Leave right. stitches out. Sure, best hooping, best everything, needles and backing and, and how to make it happen. Um, now we talked a little bit about specialty um, uh, puff and foam, but let's say and it's, it's a common question. I need some information on sewing on leather. Yes. Guess what? We've got it. Click on it. So it's it's a Word doc. We've had it around for a while, but know, it's, yeah. it's still the same great information that it's always been. Uh, I don't know why it wants to save, but anyway. Oh, because the PDF. Or no, it's doc. Yes. It's a doc. Um, click right on it. Your Microsoft Word will open it up, and maybe one of these days I'll take all that information and just put it in HTML so that you can read it right here. Um, but really good information on leather. Uh, silk. Same thing. Embroidery on silk. Okay, here's four simple steps, just uh, just for the asking, really. Uh, performance wear we talked about. Okay, performance wear. Um, yeah, pretty much start here. Start with this. It shows you our Facebook and YouTube videos. It shows you uh, best techniques all the way through. What density. Uh, adhesive, uh, stabilizer, everything is, is covered right here in this document. Um, oh boy, another great topic. It's, there, there are probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 300 documents in the knowledge base. My, my goal has always been to try to add a few every week, so 50 weeks a year and you add you know, two or three a week. Um, but yeah, we're, we're trying to add information, update information, provide as much as we can on a very regular basis, um, alphabets, and fonts, same thing, well, similar things. So a lot of information on adding a open type font, a font package, video presentations that talk about fonts, mm -hmm. small lettering, adding and editing your alphabets in Design Shop, that's a big one, okay. Adding and editing your alphabets, here's a link to the Design Shop manual, and guess what? Videos. Yes. <laughs> Back it up a lot with real videos. Yeah. Definitely. Hey, what if, what if in the past somebody bought a alphabet, and we were in the alphabet selling business for yeah, years. Yeah, premiums, right. Uh -huh. And some people uh, still have some alphabets that they love, and they, they want to load those into Design Shop 10 or Design Shop 9. There's your instructions right there. Yeah, the computer crashed, and so they reinstalled Design Shop. Sure. I don't have my premium fonts. Here you go, step by step, how to install an optional alphabet from a diskette or a, a CD. CD or, or uh, floppy. Floppy disk, yeah, the three and a half inch diskettes. Yeah, so, first off, you have to find a drive to put it in. <laughs> That's right. So, things have changed. Yeah. Um, custom OFA alphabets for Design Shop 9 and 10. Um, again, this is something that was available for many years in the past, not quite as, as common of a thing, and, and it doesn't happen like it used to. And a lot of them are included now with the standard package, sure. too, uh, Here's, or similar. So here, let's look at, let's just say DS10. Let's, I'm going to challenge the, the search capabilities here. DS10 fonts. You could say design shop, but look at this. What's new in Design Shop 10, including a full oh, list of yeah. alphabets? 
26. Yep. And so here are the different revisions of Design Shop 10. Here's just a general document uh, within the manual. It, this, if you click on this, it'll show you all of this. You can go through what's new and there there's is. a PDF. I'm not going to try to open it because I learned this already in, on your computer, hmm. your PDF viewer. Maybe it's because we're doing a, an online session, but it, it's a regular Adobe Acrobat file. If you open this, there are it shows uh, the pictures just like the flyouts that you yeah. see, uh, uh, you know, when you the select an alphabet. Individual sheets, yeah. right. So it lists min, max, and all the characters. And this document has all of those, all the characters, all the different fonts, everything listed out. Uh, it's right here. It's, it's free and available to everybody. All you had to do in this case was I searched for, let's just say, design shop. There we go. Okay, installing what's new, including your list of alphabets. It's all right there. Um, small lettering we talked about. A few more things because we're about time to wrap up here, Scott. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about uh, serial numbers, how to find your serial number on your machine, or how to find uh, stitch counts. Again, you can search for this from anywhere in the knowledge base. You don't have to be on a specific page. Uh, here's a good one. This, this was a general question uh, for years that we would always try to put together information as it was requested. How to transport a machine. Seems like it would be easy, but there's some things that people should really pay attention to when you're transporting. <clears throat> Some of the big things. So click right on this. Uh, general information, weight, height, depth. Only lift it by the process below. Don't transport your machine on the cart. Oh, that's nice because when I used to teach class, sometimes people would pick their machine up in a pickup or something to take it home, and I would always be <laughs> giving them the dimensions. So well, it fit or not. I, maybe one of these days I'll put some pictures in here, but we have pictures of just. Um, Really unfortunate situations where people have tried to strap the machine to the cart, mm, put it in the back sure. of a you know big oh. hauling moving truck, and I heard of one bouncing yeah. down the highway. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Um, the other thing is great is you can search for like messages. I don't know if you covered that that your machine displays. Like, where sure. is it trying to tell me here? Like, right. seat time uh, out or what? Or oh, there's some like. Uh, Unidentified or version, needle, needle something down. like that. Remember needle down? Yeah. You're like, wow, that thing blew into something perfect. Uh, yep, here, for that's what I'm looking for. The installed version of the application could not be determined. That's an actual message that uh, people have seen in the past. Step-by-step -step instructions on how to fix it. We use this all the time. Yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll get a question. Hey, Dan, remember that Remember that situation with the installed version? I'm like, yeah, there's a good document. Oh, that's right. I'll go look for the document, and you know, we're, we're back in business. Or like needle stopped in the down position yep. on one of them. Um, tells you how to fix it. If it Ooh. stops in between needles, there's all sorts of uh, right. help there. Yeah, how this about is that? incredible. Yeah. So there's your stop with needle down. Here's sewing caps. Uh, not really what we just searched for, but here's uh, and probably because you can uh, move uh, up and down, things like that. You get all the keypad functions. Now, this is something that comes in the user's manual. Uh, it's on a card with the control panel, but here's everything. An entire list of uh, maintenance functions. All of that information is right here. Key combinations for certain things. So, great information. Um, do we have any questions? I'm uh, checking. I think you're mm -hmm. amazing them and they don't know what to say. Uh -oh. <laughs> no, we know. We're good. This okay. Excellent. Right Excellent. Here. Well, thanks to everybody that joined us today. And by all means, take full advantage of the knowledge base. We, we have it here for your success. Um, if there's things you want to see, um, I'll show one more thing and, and we'll wrap it up because, you know, next Friday, this coming Friday is Design Shop Talk. So let's give them a little plug, a little right. tag right here. Design Shop Talk. We looked at all the episodes already. 
Let's say you've got some topics, topics that you would like Design Shop Talk to cover on one of the upcoming 10 o'clock Mountain Time yes. Facebook uh, productions. Here's an email address, applications at melco.com. Send your questions in. Uh, if it's not already covered in the list, if it's not already in the video, and you're just, you're just dying to get this figured out, send an email to applications at melco.com. Let us know what version of Design Shop, what your question is, um, how, can, how can we give, you know, what kinds of instructions can we give? Yes, definitely. Yeah. Well, we covered a lot. It's <laughs> a lot of times it's information overload, but we try to make it easy. So start at the very beginning. Start at melcoservice.com. Everything's right here. The knowledge base is right here at the top. First thing you see, search for anything. Just, oh man, needles. We have information just on needles. Okay, yeah. breaking needles, needle down, presser foot needles, all, all about, about needles. the size, the tips, yeah. what to use for applications. Yeah, so, that's incredible. Everybody, please take full <clears throat> advantage of this information. Uh, if you'd like to see something added, shoot us an email. You can send it to service at melco.com. That's our technical support email address. Or send it to applications at melco.com. We, we check and keep an eye on all of that. But really, uh, thank you for joining us today. Thanks for the opportunity to show you the information. And thanks for joining me, Scott. Just a plug. We'll yeah. be at the, uh, Mike and Nate and I will ah. be at the uh, NBM show in Denver uh, Friday and Saturday. That's right. Come down and see us. Excellent. Uh, yep. We'll, uh, some of the tech support folks will be walking through on, on Friday, just checking out all the different mm -hmm. vendors and um, and all the, the caps and performance wear and hoops and, and everything. Yeah. It, it's, it's a fun thing. So it's at the convention center in Denver. Uh, it's this Friday and Saturday. And hopefully if you're in the area, you can make it. Great. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Have a great day.